السلام عليكم and hope you are fine الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Welcome to this special meeting that we will discuss and continue our explanations regarding to the workflow First of all, let's see that where we are now Do you remember that we discussed the story about one lady, she got employed in a hospital, and this hospital is still, still as a startup, so uh, there are so many things that she should think about it. We discussed about that lady, her name Hafsa. And we reached to the level that to make her able to provide the proper care, she needs to build the trust with the patient, right? So, this trust relationship, it had a lot of dimensions, to which extent that Hafsa, this healthcare provider, will be able to provide the rapport relation with patient, right? And we come now to the second part of this build of the relation or the method that she can adopt to build a proper relationship with the patient, which is to make sure that the care already going in a harmony way. Harmony way here means that it's already clear for this patient that he will go from one station to another, to another, to another in a smooth way. This will reflect a lot of aspects within the patient thinking about the trust that the people who are dealing with already profession and competent and provide the best care on the same time, that will reduce, of course, the waiting as we discussed in our OPD. So, we will make a part of care that will be safe, effective, harmonized, and consistent with the patient requirements. That's why we come to the stage that we want to build the workflow. So, what is the workflow? How I will understand this workflow? A lot of people start to say and discuss, oh, workflow, workflow. So what is the workflow, right? How I will understand the workflow and where should I locate within this uh, diagram or this thinking about the workflow? Workflow, it's an explanation for the patient flow in OPD since beginning of the interaction with the patient until he finish this interaction, either for discharge, that he will, the patient will not come back again to OPD, or until the patient will take another schedule or go for another station of care outside the OPD as a body. So the patient will start the interaction with us in the outpatient department as part from coming on the main entrance, go to registration, then after that, triaging, taking vital signs, seeing the doctor, and uh, go to the pharmacy or uh, x-ray, radiology, whatever the kind of care. Our responsibility on this way, that we will start to think how we will clarify this process. This is very important section within our preparations for making our hospital. We are thinking in the best patient experience that the patient will deal with. On the same time, we are looking to provide the most evidence-based practice supported for the patient and maximizing the patient experience. That's what we will take and discuss within this short notice. As we come that in the previous meeting, we said, we are going to classify our workflow or the methodology of do it to two phases. Phase one will be responsible or we will focus on the non-procedural clinic. When the patient come to our department and there is no any procedure that will be done on this visit, right? This will take in consideration that either the patient come with appointment, the patient come without appointment, maybe the patient will come from ER, maybe the patient will come from other healthcare center. In both cases, the patient flow, will we will think about all possibilities and try to figure out these gaps within the care and the patient flow. 
the series of events that will happen from the patient come until the end based on this our expectation for the best care that will be provided for the patient. And we will transfer this aspect to P on paper. The second phase, it will be the same, but we will go for much detail or more detail regarding to the procedures that the patient will do. Either the patient come and there will be a procedure such as a dental or optha or maybe something related to neurology. We should figure out how the patient will go. Now, for each step, there are three key terms, three important parts or three important components should be covered within this uh, section or within this point, within this aspect. The first one, what is the event or what will happen in this uh, particular time that the patient will stay on this um, phase? On the same phase, we will answer the question, who is the responsible? Who is not mean that you or me as a name, rather than as a profession? It will be nurse, it will be patient experience or patient relation. Uh, is it going to be doctor, pharmacist, radiologist, lab technician, phlebotomy, technician, audiology, for all. Who will do response? So, for each part, we will have the answer. These three aspects should be covered on this step that will be exposed to patient or the patient will pass a flow. Either what is going to happen, who is going to provide this happen or this action, and where this happened. What is the location of this happening for this event? It can be the reception, uh, observation, uh, triaging, uh, or assessment room, the lab, or whatever. So let's see here how we will go through these steps one by one. Within this category of thinking, we are responsible now, we are already assigned within groups, right? So each one of us uh, belongs to a group. This group responsible to make this flow, or of course it will be in a series of flows. After we will finish, we will discuss with the concerned people. Now within the condition that we are working, as you know, we have an our regular meeting that happen on Tuesday and Thursday, but not all the concerned people able to join this meeting. We have doctors, we have lab, pharmacists, um, registrations, uh, other departments. So, in this way, we will go on the second phase after we start to make this backbone for our workflow to discuss these steps with the concerned people. And we will go for the procedural on the same way. In this consequence of actions, we are coming to suggest methodology to understand what do we mean by workflow, why workflow happen in this way. Each group now responsible to write it down, what we already agreed the last time we discussed in the general surgery and the internal medicine. Based on that, on coming Tuesday, we will discuss this with the concerned people, and I suggested already that we will start with the general surgery and we will meet the general surgery doctors and discuss the flow of events, how it will happen. Okay, now thinking about this one, this is an example of how now we are coming for this workflow. Step, then another step, then another step. There are some important features for this workflow. First one, it's related to patient. Patient, he is the center of care that we are all rooming around. We are taking the work of patient or the flow of patient from the patient perspectives. So if I'm a patient and come to the hospital and in, in some way I will meet Hafsa, in some way I will meet Abdul Karim, in some me, in phase I will meet you and so on. There are something happen with me. We wanted to describe this from the patient eyes, not from your eyes. That doesn't mean 
we can see it exactly how it looks like rather than it will start to give us an indication and of course we will come to stop on some unanswered questions i don't say that i'm able to answer all the questions i don't think any one of us now at this moment able to answer all the questions rather than we will end the same the shape that you are seeing step what happened in this step what are the actions that supposed to happen on this step who is responsible and where this should happen or with it, where this could happen i will write this on paper and after that i will start to put the scenario okay we will end maybe with the endless scenario right we will end up with a lot types of events that can happen so to make it easy for you when we start to make the brainstorming about drawing up and write it down because we are until this phase we are working among group it's important to have this brainstorming discussion challenging for the ideas further discussions and deep analysis about the importance of having proper workflow this will make you know, uh, it will describe how we will work you know we will describe what are the actions that we will go from or go through it will describe the quality of care it will describe the patient experience and it will describe the proper treatment evidence-based practice research issues for <coughs> sorry issues for development and so on so in our case in the outpatient department let's think about the most um expected or the most redundant phenomena or the most redundant things or the desired outcome that we are dealing in a clinic or in opd with one patient come with a complaint and it he will he or she will go through some steps some something will happen inside and it end by that he already uh, finish or end this suffer or this pain or this complaint we have something we call the health seeking behavior that's something make the patient to come to our you know clinic we are going now to classify this health seeking behavior as the patient come with a, with appointment or without appointment regardless of the type of the surgery either the patient come with appointment that mean he already visited us before and now he is going to take second visit or a different clinic visit and he was with seeing by a kind of speciality and now he's going for another kind of speciality or maybe he walks in and walks in also maybe the patient already had an affine and registered before in the hospital or maybe not and in both cases there is no specific appointment the patient doesn't have any booked appointment with the doctor what will happen in the first one what will happen in the second one and how this will interact and the first scenario will be that the patient discharged from obd so the patient was not in need to go to go for er was not in need to go for hospital admission to cover these two places two places so in this case we have a two expected input to the process and two expected output to the process let's figure it out either the patient uh, come uh, appointment or an appointment and in both cases the patient already discharged to home what are the scenario that make the patient come back to home either the patient just finished the care and no need for any further appointment maybe the patient need further appointment in the semi clinic maybe the patient need further appointment in a different clinic or maybe the patient uh, required treatment uh, and after that will go to uh, home uh, so he will wait in pharmacy or something so in this way the pharmacy are important to be included within the workflow in other cases the doctor or the health decision what why why we will use here a health decision because we have also non-physician clinic make this in your mind when we come to the clinic that led by non-nurses <clears throat> or by by other than doctors you know, other by other than physicians or the patient need uh, or the health decision that required 
further lab investigation and radiology. We end up by this expectation. We should start to write the first one as, as an sample or as a case. What are the steps that the patients will go through? Coming to OPD and steps, for example, start by registration, then selection, or taking a patient some procedures uh, based on our structure in the hospital. There will be an assessment, diagnosis, after the patient seen, maybe pharmacy, testing, reappointment, discharge, transfer to another clinic, and what are the scenarios. When have this structure in front of us, we will go for either the patient go for admission or transfer to emergency. In this way, we will have much more clear way for our tasks and responsibilities. <coughs> what do we expect from, from each other? What do I expect to see you on Tuesday, on Thursday? What are the ideas that will come to the discussion? We should have brainstorming and ideas generations. We will go for different ideas. We will ask a lot of questions. We will critique these expectations. And we start to analyze it, develop these workflows, testing, and when we, inshallah, transfer to the hospital, we will be ready for this one. Now, to this level, it's required from you that to write it on paper. We will use some apps, applications, such as the one that I'm using for doing this presentation, maybe Lucido, Miro, PowerPoint, Excel. There are plenty of softwares that will transfer it to this fancy shape of a blue, yellow, black, whatever, whatever from the shapes. But the shapes is not important rather than what's written inside these shapes. So let's focus more about the tasks and responsibilities and describe it in a proper way. We will come to the phase, or we will come to step, that each group will have someone will work on this by software. Or it can be group work that all we are participate on the same file. What's important now to say that we are able to clarify the workflow or the patient flow within the OPD clinic. In this way, there are a lot of names you will hear. If, if I will just write workflow, so uh, maybe I will get confused within the Google uh, resources and so on about the workflow. In general, the description from the basic part comes to discuss the flow chart of the patient flow in the OBD. So this is the focus. This is how it looks like. We will have within this uh, flow, there are some different shapes. And these shapes, reflect some differences in the meaning, okay? In some shapes, like for the fear, the shape number one, usually this refer to initiation of the step, while the shape of this one, number three, it means like the decision will be made, or we will end up by two, two ways, either yes or no, or maybe three, or maybe four, but here means there will be a decisions, and this, for example, when the patient seen by doctor, the doctor decide either pharmacy or uh, reappointment or discharge to home or the admission. In this way, we are expecting different decisions and each decisions will take us for a separate workflow. What I am looking here for you to able to recognize the step that lead us for a decision, okay? lead us for uh, something will be different. Look here, for example, about each scenario and each step. We are talking about patient come with appointment to see the general surgeon because he had um, hernia, for example. It's not necessarily here to say that he had hernia, but in general, the, the patient come with appointment to see general surgeon. Registration, then something will happen after until the patient will be seen by doctor, then the doctor will decide uh, different kind of decisions. And for each decision, there will be specific steps that we are able or looking to provide this direction for the patient. So the patient will not lost, I will not be lost. And also the trust will be assured and maximization for the patient experience. 
Let's see another example. Like the patient come to doctor without appointment. He come, the same patient, our patient in our scenario, do you remember the name? We say that, that his name is Ali, right? So Ali come to the uh, OBD and would like to see the general surgery. He comes that he knows he would like to see the general surgery. But the difference between this scenario and the previous one that the patient does not have uh, appointments. The patient just come, walks in. What are the things that will make it different? After we finish this part, we will ask, is it possible to be seen by doctor today or not? Is there a free slots or a free space for the patient or uh, for the doctor to be seen, to see the patient or not? This should clear also in the workflow because it's possible that we will deal with a both scenario. In this way, the patient come, then something, something, then something, something, then something, something, then bye-bye, or then discharge. We have to think about it in this way. In this category, we are able to expect what are the different decisions that the patient will end with. We will end by the way that have a new questions, unanswered concerns and think about it and work on it. Until this phase, I'm expecting, as I told you, we are focusing the effort for non-procedural clinic with non-procedural clinic that led by physician. Because we will have also for procedural clinic led by, by doctors and our physicians and we will have uh, non-procedural clinic led by non-physicians, such as nutrition and other departments. Make this on the steps. On each action, we should categorize the, the place of happening. And according to that, we should be aware about our floor map. I'm sure that all of us are already aware about the structure, how it looks like. I'm expecting uh, that all of us, we know where is the OPD, how I will deal with these terms or samples within the floor, ma floor map. At the same time, I'm sure that we are not uh, an architectures or um, yani civil engineers to be able to read all these maps rather than to get the important uh, part of our uh, uh, of our understanding for how the works will go. After that, it's important now to go to the next phase, which is make this as a visual chart. And in this way, we'll support you, inshallah. We will have a special um, or a further meetings, and we will discuss how we will transfer this one as, uh, let's say, as um, software copy or paper that having all the samples and explaining what are the samples. In some places, we will have electronic medical record. We will have patient registration, uh, maybe infection control, maybe um, uh, patient violence or patient family support. All this have to start to be clear in our minds so we can go for proper workflow. Proper workflow, that means we are able to perceive uh, the required from us we are able to make the life easy. And this is Abdul Karim Blasi. Thank you very much for your time that you spend in listening for this lecture. And see you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.